Well, hello, and welcome back to Lamplight City here on Boutou Place Whatever. In our previous episode, we saw the kidnapped pancakes. It was, uh, it was good. Some mistakes were made, but we were, we were able to pull it on through. I didn't know it was going to go. Today, case number three. Let's get it going. I actually do... Ooh, oh, lag, lag, lag. So, you're up at last. Yeah? Was I asleep for like three weeks? Is something the matter, Addy? Oh, I see. You don't remember last night, do you? I guess I shouldn't be surprised. No, that's right. We were drunk. Uh, Please tell me I didn't do anything stupid last night. No, I wouldn't use the word stupid. Oh, thank God. Disgusting and shameful would be more appropriate, <laughs> I think. Oh, what did I do exactly? It was nearly two when you burst in here, soused to the eyeballs from God knows where. I imagine you've probably forgotten that, too. You were muttering something about peace and quiet and then proceeded to relieve yourself on my begonias before stumbling into bed. We Charming! Do. I salute you, O oh Vice Admiral of the Narrow Seas. Good God. Uh, how embarrassing. I'm so sorry, Addy. I don't know what came over me. I don't either. I've never seen you in such a state, and I pray that I never will again. That's what happens when you get on the sauce. Mm -hmm. I swear you won't ever again trust me. Uh, a bit off, a bit I off more than bit I off could. more than I could chew last night. I promise you, it won't happen again. What possessed you to go out and get so drunk anyway? I decided to stop taking the soporific. It was interfering with my ability to focus on cases. I thought perhaps having a drink or two would help me sleep, and I got a bit carried away. I see. Well, I'm at least glad you've stopped taking that terrible medicine. But trading it for alcohol? This had better really be a one-time occurrence. Yeah. Anyway, you got another message from Upton. It's there on the table, if you're feeling fit for the world now. Yeah, song over. We can do this. Message. Fordham, a new case has come on in, uh, but the police are already investigating. Details have made their way into the newspaper. Won't be able to meet you at Rowan, so here are the details. The deceased is Desiree Lathan. Her apartment is at 840 right way. Good luck, Upton. Huh. What does Upton say this time? That she can't meet me and that I should go straight to the scene of the crime. I wonder if that means the police have started to suspect that she's giving you these cases. She also says news of this case has been made public and the police are already investigating. Have you heard of Desiree Latham? Yes, there's something about her in today's paper. I didn't read the article though. Where's the crime scene? 840 right way. It's not too far from here, thankfully. You're sure you're feeling up to this today? I'll be fine. The mental exercise will get me back to normal in no time. True this. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and check out the the paper, actually. Um, Harris baby found. We did that. Third suspect. Okay, another Chomley. Uh, Chief Police was denied that there's a mass murder talking about. This is the one she was telling us about. We have no indication. Um, okay, Prime Minister's campaign. Ca Gascon Grand Dam found burned to death. Desiree Lathan, age 63, was found burned to death in her home yesterday morning. Police were called to the scene by a neighbor who smelled smoke only to find the grisly scene. Miss Lathan in her bed, body burnt to ashes. The circumstances of Miss Lathan's death are unknown, but the police have not ruled out the possibility of foul play. Lathan was born in New Bretagne, the daughter of a wealthy plantation owner. She grew to become one of the most loved and respected of the Gascon Grand Dams. Although she had many suitors over the years, Lathan never married. An avid reader, writer, and poet, Miss Lathan had several articles published in the local newspaper magazine. Mrs. Gascon said they would miss her seeing her just all alive. Okay. Well, this is shaping up to be quite the investigation. Yeah. should probably get a move on before the police ruin the crime scene any more than they already have. Good luck, Miles. Okay. And stay away from the bars, would you? Yes. Yes, my love. Mm, okay. So, burn. Time for me to get some things done. I look forward to your return. Oh, she sounds so happy about it. Mmm. I just watered her begonias. She can just come on down. What <laughs> they have in a hash, a hash pile for? Oh. Looks as though we've arrived fashionably late. Excuse me, sir, but this is an active crime scene. We can't allow members of the public. Oh, this isn't just any member of the public, Kane. This is Miles Fordham. He used to be one of us until he got his partner killed. Wonderful. Officer Parsons is on the scene. It's a shock the apartment isn't in a shambles. Good day to you too, officers. Fordham? 
What are you doing here? Ah, Captain Snelling. What a pleasure. That's Chief Snelling now, Fordham. I don't expect you follow the workings of the department much these days, but I'd appreciate the proper address. So nice to see the power hasn't gone to his head. My apologies, Chief Snelling. You haven't answered my question. What in blazes are you doing here? I assume the crime would actually give it a chance of being solved. I just dropped by and say hello to my former colleagues. Just a social call. <laughs> I wanted to see what my former colleagues were up to these days. And you often socialize at murder sites, do you? <laughs> this is an active crime scene, Fordham. Leave the premises immediately. Oh, man. Huh. I don't think telling him what he needs is really going to help anything. If we work together, we can solve this in no time. You can try to keep me away, but I'm not giving up. Um, let's go, let's, let's try the middle we ground. We can solve this case in no time if we work together, you know. We don't need any help. Not even from former detectives. Parsons, I'm going back to the station. I want your report the minute you're done here. Understand? Yes, sir. Now, don't get any funny ideas for them. If you so much as breathe on anything in here, I'll have you arrested for tampering with a crime scene. Do I make myself clear? Um, sure. Whatever sure. you say, Chief. Whatever you say, Chief. Keep your nose where it belongs, or you'll have me to answer to. Ooh. I suppose it's reassuring that even in this crazy, ever-changing world, you can always count on Snelling to be a complete ass. Yeah. You heard the Chief. No snooping around. The sooner you get out of here, the better for all of us. Just on my way out. An invitation to the Gascone Grand Am's Ball. It seems it was held two nights ago at the Gascone Supper Club. Might be worth looking into, seeing as it's our only lead right now. Hmm, no title. I doubt it's a diary. People rarely leave those things laying out in the open. Hmm. They're just gonna let me kind of walk over here? Books? Ms. Lathan was quite the fan of poetry. Let's just hope her taste was better than Madame Dupre's. Definitely too young to be Miss Lathan. Perhaps a relative? Is that... Um... You have to hand it to her. Miss Lathan certainly had a unique taste in hmm. fashion. I bet you could see her coming a mile away. So can I talk to this guy? Begging your pardon, officer. Yes, what is it, sir? Hmm. Is there anything you can tell me about Desiree Lathan? I'm afraid not. You don't have clearance in this investigation. And there's nothing I can say to convince you otherwise? My superiors would be very upset if they knew I was breaking the rules. I'm sorry. Okay. I think the operative phrase in this instance is if they knew. I do. We need to find a way to get Parsons out of here. Maybe we should visit up then at the station. Maybe. Um. How long have you been on the force, officer? Two months, sir. And how's it treating you so far? This is where I was meant to be. That's good to hear. Parsons mentioned you used to be a detective? I was, yes, for 15 years. It wasn't always easy, but I loved every minute of it. Parsons goes on about how he's got his eye on becoming a detective, but I don't know if I'd be able to handle it. Is that right? Yes. He's up for review. I think he's trying to impress Snelling to improve his chances. Parsons wants to be a detective? Now I've heard it all. As if he needed more of a reason to be Snelling's lapdog. Do you enjoy working with Officer Parsons? I... I don't like to talk about my colleagues. Yeah, seems like especially a Especially when they're standing right over there. I understand. Perhaps this isn't the right time to be asking. Well, what was Chief Snelling doing here? Nothing more than a routine inspection of the crime scene. Okay. Routine inspection? But the Chief of Police only goes to extremely high-profile crime scenes. I couldn't possibly comment on that, sir. Okay. Thanks for your time, officer. Not a problem. Huh. All right. Let's talk to this jerk face, apparently. Excuse me, Officer Parsons. Clear off, Fordham. The chief doesn't want you here, and neither do I. You aren't on the force anymore, so you've got to respect the rules, just like every other citizen. He'd be respecting my fist if I were alive, believe me. 
I'm not trying to cause any trouble. I just want to ask a few questions. Well, if it will get you to leave faster. It will. What can you tell me about Desiree Lathan? Nothing. Because you don't know? No, because I'm not going to betray Chief Snelling's orders and divulge that information. He's got a jerk face. <laughs> uh, Parsons, you know me. What harm would it do to tell me just a little bit? Do I have to state the obvious? If it were up to me, you'd be in jail for murdering an officer. I wouldn't make such claims without knowing the facts, Parsons. It could get you in serious trouble. It'd be a real tragedy to see your career cut short and you back in the workhouse polishing airship rivets. You don't scare me, Fordham. Rest assured, the feeling is mutual. Hmm. Have you made much progress on this investigation? Did you not hear me the first time, Fordham? Drop it before I have to arrest you for interfering with a police investigation. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. Good. Okay, let's see if we can't figure out some things to get this jerk face out of here. So, uh, police station, let's go down to the Gascon Supper Club. Oh. The bridge to Lyon overlooking the House of Parliament. I suppose that seeing that helps the patrons of this club put on airs. That painting depicts a hand dropping a bunch of blood-soaked silver coins into another hand. Definitely sets the bar for the type of people who come here, I'd say. Probably so. These are all high-end foo-foo liqueurs and cordials. You couldn't pay me to drink that rubbish. Nobody's bothered clearing this table yet, it seems. Hmm. Excuse me, miss? Oh, well, hello there, handsome. I've never seen you around here before. Care to join me for a drink? Sorry, I need to keep my head clear while I'm on duty. Uh, thank you, but I'm on duty. On duty? What are you, a cop? Uh, force of habit. I'm a private investigator, actually. Oh, not much better, if you ask me. The name's Miles Fordham, and you are? Charlotte Robineau. Pleasure. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? I suppose not. It would help pass the time. You've got a sexy voice. Oh, God. <laughs> not sexy in the... Not were you here for the, the Grand Dame's ball though. the other night? Of course, we all were. Well, except for Laura. Terrible business. You mean Laura Dupre? The very same. Have you met? I have. Uh, in fact, I investigated her attempted murder. Is that right? I heard she ended up in jail for torturing her servants. Yes, it was quite disturbing. I didn't yes, think it was. Laura was capable of such a thing. She always seemed so kind. Except there are servants. Guess we all have our dark secrets. Does that Ooh. apply to you as well, Miss Robineau? If I told you, then it would no longer be a secret, would it? True this. Fair point. Do you know Desiree Lathan? I knew her, yes. When did you last speak to her? Oh, it's been ages. She and I haven't had much to do with each other for a while. Why is that? It's really not important. We just didn't see... Eye to eye on a few things. Was she at the Grand Dame's ball? Yes, she was. Drinking up a storm as usual. Mm. Desi really knew how to enjoy herself. How much did she drink? Oh, I don't know. She used to outmatch me, and I can handle quite a bit. What can you tell me about Desiree's death? Just what I've read in the papers. She burned to death. It's horrible. She certainly didn't deserve to die in such a gruesome way. Did she have any enemies? Anyone who might have wanted to do her harm? No. Everyone loved her. Except you? Mr. Fordham, I said we haven't had much to do with each other. That doesn't mean I didn't care for her. Yeah, she didn't seem no, to have to set somebody on let's fire. Let's drop the subject. Tell me a little about yourself. Why, Mr. Fordham, I hardly know you. Well, that said, I'm always open to making new friends. <laughs> Watch out, Miles. I think she's getting ready to pounce. Wow, cougar. Fashion sense. You've really got a great sense of fashion and style. All the other grand dames must be jealous. Oh, you. The hair is lovely. Not the smile, the I lovely hair. I must compliment you on your lovely hairstyle. Oh, how sweet of you to say. 
though it is getting a bit ragged. I'm having it done this afternoon, in fact. My girl Adelaide is a treasure. Adelaide? You don't say. Well, she must be talented to improve on near perfection. Oh, such a flattering tongue, Mr. Fordham. Uh, okay, I guess we'll go all the way. Can I just say you've got the most radiant smile I've ever seen? Oh, why, that's very sweet. So we could talk to Adelaide. It's true. Not many women your age still have all their teeth intact. I, I beg your pardon. I didn't know you were such a master of the high <laughs> kick, Miles. You got your foot in your mouth in record time. <laughs> uh, I, I just meant, you know what? Never mind. Thanks for your time. I'll let you get back to your drink. <laughs> Thanks, sweetheart. <laughs> That's freaking hilarious. Okay. Uh, all right. So, not, not really a whole lot going on there. We'll be able to get some more um, after I talk to my wife. Let's talk to, uh... I didn't imagine we'd be coming back here in this lifetime. Fordham, have you solved the case already? Don't I wish. I haven't even gotten started. Well, I'm here if you need anything. Just be sure not to let Snelling see you. Is he back yet? He arrived a few minutes ago. I expect he'll be sequestered in his office today, so you shouldn't have to worry too much. Good to know. Who is that? What is going on here? Okay, let's Got a talk moment, to her. Upton? Yes, but let's make this quick. So is she like a secretary? Unless her about herself. Back just to work, just I to see. kick it off. Yes, well, the coffee shop holiday had to end eventually. I'm gonna have to find someplace else to meet you. The higher ups are getting suspicious. To be honest, it was a bit wretched there. I won't miss it. Well then, Mr. Big Bug, you can have the honor of choosing the next place. Under a bridge somewhere, perhaps. Perhaps. Have you been able to find any leads on Bill's death? Have you? Not yet, no. I've been looking, but I haven't been able to come up with anything either. There has to be a connection somewhere. Criminals don't usually just fall off the map. I'm having some trouble with Officer Parsons. You and everyone else who's ever met him. What's the problem? He's keeping me away from the Lathan crime scene. Of course. He's one of the most loyal to Snelling. Any suggestions for how I might get him away so I can look around? I might have an idea. There are several reported crimes that haven't been assigned yet, and Parsons is itching to prove his investigative chops. He'd hmm. probably abandon his post for a good enough lead and the chance to impress Snelling. Up to no good. You impress me. Department politics are something of a specialty of mine. Okay. Any updates on the Harris baby? He's back home and doing well thanks to you. I'm glad to hear it. You did an impressive job. I admit I was a bit concerned about how you'd fare after months of taking it easy. But I suppose detective work is like riding a bicycle. It's a guaranteed way to end up with a broken arm. I see the Gazette has caught wind of this supposed mass murderer. Yes, Snelling has been positively fuming about it. Between that and the Lathan case being publicized on the same day, it's been a nightmare for the department. Mm. Any idea how they got the information? I don't think anyone in the department has spoken to the press. Maybe they just have some very good reporters. So is it serious? Should we be concerned? Three murders is nothing to sneeze at, but all the victims have been men in Chumley. If that changes, then things might start getting urgent. Hmm. Uh, isn't that just the way it thinks? You can bet they'd have already caught the bastard if the first body had turned up in Leon. About getting Parsons away. All right, these are the as of yet. Oh, okay, she's crimes. gonna go on that. All the right. body of a young man was found in the Hodgman River by the Gascone docks this morning. A woman in Chumley reported hearing a single gunshot in her neighbor's apartment last night. There was a deadly explosion at a factory in Worcester that may be linked to sabotage. And that's it for right now. Any of those strike your fancy? Hmm. Give me some details about that Give factory me the details explosion. about the factory explosion. The owner of the Hawkins Steelworks reported an explosion at his factory that killed two of his workers. He says he's been getting several threatening letters about his current project. And so he suspects someone has sabotaged the operation? Yes, likely the Redites. Do you think Parsons will be interested? Yeah, because if it's onto the Redites, that could be a big, big case. Yeah. Sounds good. Let's go with that one. All right, I'll send out the report as soon as we're done talking. Okay. That's it for now. Better get back to it then. It's like murder. It's like they're already investigating a murder. 
but straight up sabotage yeah that that's where it could get good on it let's head home I'll talk to my wifey see if I can I've managed to survive the wild streets of New Britannia welcome home this seems like this might be a bit of a tougher case Addy what is it miles um how, how what have you been worry? up to lately Nothing particularly exciting. My usual clients have been scheduling appointments, and I've been trying to get some new ones as well. In my free time, I've been catching up on my reading. Okay. Anything good? Yes, the conclusion to the dissembling mechanism was just published in Brentwell Magazine last week. What's that? James Penstroke's latest serial. I wanted to read it to you, but you haven't been around much lately. Perhaps I'll take a look now that I can actually concentrate again. Yes, you could read it to me. I wouldn't mind hearing it again. It would certainly be a nicer way to spend your time than going out drinking. Uh, about Addie, that. Please know that I'm deeply sorry for my behavior last night. I'll do everything I can to make it up to you. Would you like me to get some new begonias? I don't need pretty flowers or pretty words, Miles. I just want things to go back to how they were. That's really all the apology I require. Hmm. You know was I'm Desiree saying? Lathan a client of yours by any chance? No, but plenty of the other grandams used to gossip about her. What sort of things would they say? Usually they'd comment about how much she'd had to drink the night before. I got the impression she was quite the tippler. Sounds I like it. I hope you're not planning on following her example. That no, would no, require no. me to burn to death in our bed. Then I stand by my previous statement. Okay. Charlotte You've Robineau. got an appointment with Charlotte Robineau later today, don't you? Are you using your detecting skills on me now? I spoke with her at the Gascon Supper Club, and she mentioned you. Turns out she knew Desiree Lathan. Makes sense. That social circle is tiny. She wasn't very <laughs> forthcoming, though. Do you think you might try and persuade her to talk? Persuasion shouldn't be necessary. She usually just sits in the chair and starts gossiping up a storm. I think I know more about all the Gascon Grand Dames than anyone should. All right, That's good. good. <clears throat> That's very good. Huh. I don't know, Miles. Don't you think we should at least investigate the crime scene first so we have all the details? Yes, we'll get back to that. Shut up. Yeah. Right. These are the things I want you to ask her about. So you want me to take off about an inch, but keep enough for your curls? Yes, that's right. You know how I like it, Adelaide. How was the Grand Dam's ball? How was the Grand Dam's ball? Was your hairdo a hit? Oh, it was. All those other old biddies were practically fainting with jealousy. Truth be told, though, the evening Maybe I should investigate the crime scene first. Just the regular crowd of wags and gossips. You know, sometimes I envy people like you, Adelaide. People like me? Yes, you know, ordinary people. Being a member of high society can be so draining. One quite lacks a sense of purpose, of ordinary honest usefulness that comes from a good day's labor. Have you done much of that sort of labor yourself, madam? What? No, of course not. But I imagine it must be quite good for the soul, quite grounding, just being what you are. No airs or pretense. Oh, you, you've missed a bit there on the left ear. Now, I can Do imagine sure Miles coming on here and punching her in the face. Certainly, madam. Hmm. Has anyone special caught your eye recently? I wonder recently? if she's going to talk about me. Ha! <laughs> no. I think I'm getting too old for most of the young pups I see around these days. Besides, marriage has proved to be more trouble than it's worth. I'm finished with that whole game. Although there was one fellow who came into the supper club today. Pity he was only interested in asking questions. Oh? Yes, the dark brooding type. Sleepless nights etched all over his face. Still handsome, though. I invited him to join me for a drink, but he refused. Turned out he was a private investigator, if you can believe it. Oh? What was he asking about? Nothing of consequence. I didn't tell him very much anyway. Probably for the best he didn't join you for that drink then. 
I have to say, your musical selection for today it's like, is. We can lovely. dance around this it's until nice the end. To know someone like you can appreciate some of the finer points of culture. In case you were wondering, the piece is the fourth symphony by a composer named Theophilus von Wagner. Yes, it's refreshing to hear the fourth symphony for change. Most people know von Wagner for his fifth symphony or his lute concerto in D minor. Oh, you you know von Wagner? Although I admit he isn't one of my favorite Baroque composers, I can appreciate what he brought to the movement. I'm more in favor of Scaravaldi. His development of the Concerto Grosso makes for a much richer musical tapestry. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, well, perhaps so. Do you have any favorites among Scaravaldi's works? His first symphony is quite riveting. Do you mean his Concerto for Mandolin? He didn't have a first symphony as such. Well, well yes. That's what I meant. Uh, as much as I enjoy chatting, perhaps you should concentrate on what you're doing, dear. Uh, all right. I was reading in the paper this morning about what happened with Desiree Lathan. Did you hear about that? Oh, such a tragedy. Poor Desi. We hadn't talked in a long time, but... How terrible to think of her dying in such a horrible way. My condolences. Thank you, dear. Well, I mean, we already know they were friends. Did you and Desiree used to be friends? Oh, we were like sisters at one point. What happened? Uh, what else? A man got involved. Here we go. You were both after the same man? No, no, quite the contrary. We both enjoyed being unattached and had vowed to keep it that way. The spinster sisters, we used to call ourselves. But I fell for a man a few years ago. We got married and Desiree stopped speaking to me. Hmm. That's a shame. Yes, especially considering the marriage only lasted a few brief months. I lost both my husband and my best friend. I'm sure there's a lesson to be learned in that. Huh. I wonder if the, those two were attached. I'm finished. Good. I think that's all finished. Thank you, Adelaide. It was a pleasure. Yeah, no, As I screwed always. the pooch on that. Likewise, I should have went and investigated the, uh, the room week. first. And she didn't tip very well either. I'm sorry, dear. She sounds positively dreadful. No more than the other Gascon Grandowns. Yeah, I, I just screwed hope up. you managed to get something useful from that. Yeah, the husband. Or the ex-husband, anyway. I shouldn't be gone too long. Take care of yourself out there. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. Alright, let's see if... I think this should be the correct case. Damn, looks like Parsons didn't take the bait. He must not have considered that case enough to prove himself to Snelling. Huh. Okay. Got a moment, Upton? Yes, but let's make this quick. Okay. Unfortunately, Parsons didn't take the bait. Nothing worse than a picky investigator. I wish more people were like you. Thanks. Uh, thank you? <laughs> All right, these are the as of yet unassigned crimes. The body of a young man was found in the Hodgman River by the Gascone docks this morning. A woman in Chumley reported hearing a single gunshot in her neighbor's apartment last night. And that's it for right now. Okay, Anything I guess. Strike your fancy? I guess we're gonna have to go with the body. Tell me more about the body found at the docks. An unidentified man in his 20s was found in the river near the docks. The dock worker who reported it said that the body was bloated and decomposing. He must have been in the river several days. Dr. Edwards performed a post-mortem and determined the cause of death to be a blow to the head. I see. Certainly leaves a lot of questions. Do you think Parsons will be interested? Uh, yeah, let's go with Sounds that one. Good. Let's go with that one. All right. I'll send out the report as soon as we're done talking. That's okay. it for now. Better get back to it then. Yeah, I think I blew... I think I blew it with the... Uh... With that one case, man. Mm. No, really? 
Damn, looks like Parsons didn't take the bait. He must not have considered that case enough to prove himself to Snelling. Really? He's going to take the gunshot, the, the weakest of the cases. That got a moment up. He's a horrible yes, detective. But let's make this quick. Unfortunately, nothing worse. Okay. Uh, All right, he's a woman in ch and any of those. Okay. Let's hear about, let's the, hear gunshot. about the gunshot. Ethel Williamson reported hearing a sound she described as a single gunshot coming from her neighbor's apartment last night. She said she had been hearing arguments over the past several weeks, and there may have been domestic violence involved. When she knocked on the door, she got no answer, but she said she noticed the distinct smell of flowers. Intriguing. Do you think Parsons will be interested? I'm interested. Sounds good. Let's go without. All right. Okay. That's it for now. Better get. Okay. The distinct smell of flowers. I'm interested in that case. That what a Looks horrible like case. Took the bait. Now maybe we can finally have a look around the crime scene. Like the easiest. Hmm. No time. Okay. An invitation to the Gascon Grand. Okay. Let's talk to Officer Kane here. Begging your pardon, officer. Yes. What is it, sir? Do you enjoy working with Officer Parsons? If I'm being honest, he can be a bit much sometimes. Trust me, you're not the only one who feels that way. I didn't have much interaction with him when I was a detective. But the few times I did weren't very pleasant. I could tell he doesn't seem to care much for you. Although I don't think he cares much for anyone except the chief. And that's only because he's the one who gives out the promotions. Is there anything you can tell me about Desiree Lathan? I couldn't really say. Come now, I'm trying to help this investigation. Any small detail would be useful. Well, I haven't really looked over the crime scene too much. It's rather gruesome, you see. Is the body still here? Yes, what's left of it at any rate. Miss Lathan was only identified by the tattoo on her foot. I see. Really? What was Chief Snelling doing here? He was inspecting the crime scene. Yes, but why was he involved? Is there something special about it that would require the chief of police to look into it? Uh, well, someone thought it might be related to the big case we're not supposed to talk about. Oh, really? You mean the mass murderer? Y yes, sir. I could see why the chief is upset that the news has gotten out. And is it related? No, I don't believe so. But the news reports have been getting the public on edge. Of course. The less information there is, the easier it is for rumors to start spreading. Exactly. Chief Snelling has a lot of fires to put out. If that's the case, it's too bad he didn't get to Ms. Lathan in time. <laughs> Has there been much progress here? Snelling and Parsons examine the scene, that's all I know. Do you think I might have a look, now that the initial investigation's been conducted? I'm afraid that's out of the question, sir. I have my orders. Ugh. <sighs> uh. I'll be in and out before you know it. I'll leave no more trace than a ghost. If Parsons were to catch you, my career would be over. Trust me, he won't be back for some time. I swear on my honor as a former member of the New Britannia police. All right, I suppose you can <laughs> okay, go in cool. for a moment, but please be quick about it. Thank you, Officer Kane. I promise this will stay between us. I just love rookie officers. They're so gullible. I once got <laughs> one to shine my shoes for a week after convincing him it was department policy. Good times. Good times. Thanks for your time, officer. Not a problem. Not a problem. All right, cool beans. To the bedroom! Oh my god. It's certainly a pungent aroma. I can see why the officer stuck to the living room. Surprisingly modest quarters for a grand dame. You'd never guess she could buy out the likes of you and me a thousand times over. Yeah, I agree. It looks as though Miss Lathan was in the middle of writing something. It's an article for Brentwell Magazine. Really? Igniting the fires within. We are all familiar with the idea nose, of an inner fire. Say? Term usually applied Classic to a sense of passion. Well. To they have a reputation for making was. their writers go to extremes for their articles, all for the sake of entertainment. What? Perhaps we should pay their offices a visit and see exactly what it was Miss Latham was doing for them. What a to light a, a real fire within our bodies? Some crumpled up letters. 
They look to be of the romantic variety. They're from the same person, one Peter Andrews. Hey, it's always sad to see a case of unrequited love. I'm thinking we should find out who this Peter Andrews is. Good idea. Now, are you finally willing to admit that looking through rubbish does yield results sometimes? Oh my god, going way back to the, pre to the prequel. <laughs> I think I envy your prize. Okay, so dearest Desiree, I offer you my heart, though I am sadly unavailable to offer you my hand. Oh, that circumstances are different. Why must we live and love both? It's so cruel. I must continue to love and admire you from afar. I can only hope these feelings are mutual. Peter, my dearest Desiree. Okay, so that's July, September, later that year. Once again, I must declare my love for you, though you have not yet responded to any of my letters. I maintain hope that you are, you care for me as I do for you. I remain ever faithful. Call upon me, and I will wish you uh, be by your side. We will embrace as Mr. and Mrs. Andrews of oh, long last. Huh. She burning Doesn't look you? as though this fireplace has been used in a long time. I suppose we can rule it out as the source. As much as I like this painting, this isn't the time for art appreciation. Shut up. Okay. So we investigated this, investigated that. Check out the nightstand. Hmm. There's a letter in here. Dear Mrs. Latham, this letter inform you that we this have received more requests more to make changes to the law firm your of Price isn't beneficiary here. as indicated in your last a little visit. Uh, will and testament. Please come to the law offices of Uher and Price at 72 Codman Street, Worcester, so that we may review the documents and make necessary edits. Okay. Ashes oh my. to ashes and all that. I'm glad I was buried. Cremation always seemed a bit too hot to handle. Now is not the time for jokes, Bill. Are you That's serious? A... Death is the best time for jokes. Otherwise, it's all just a bunch of boo hoo hoo this. What a wah, weird wah, 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 burn that. pattern. And trust me, there's plenty of that in life. Hell, you'd know better than anyone. All right, all right. Just shut it for a bit while I look over the crime scene, would you? I need to concentrate. I don't think Desiree will be able to give us a hand with this investigation. Bill? What? I thought it was funny. It is funny. This one's clean. Well, aside from the fact that the rest of the leg is burned off. There's a tattoo on her ankle. It says, Dancing Through Life. <laughs> Hate to break it to her, but that dance is over. Alas, poor Desiree, a woman of infinite riches, of tastes most fancy. Well, where's all your money now? Come to think of it, that question might be worth answering. Ugh, greasy, fetid, stinking ashes. Who knew the human body was capable of producing such a disgusting byproduct? Greasy. I'm surprised the coroner hasn't taken the body away yet. Probably because there isn't much of a body left to take. Either that or Dr. Edwards knows better than to deal with something like this. That's extremely unlike him. He'd jump at the chance to examine this body. Perhaps we should allow him the pleasure. I hope you're not suggesting what I think you're suggesting. Miles, do you really want to go carrying around those stinking ashes in your pocket? It'll take ages to get the smell out. Hmm, good point. I'll need to find something to carry them in. Ah. Okay, so. Need to get something to carry them on in. That's a nice portrait of Miss Lathan. Too bad it was damaged by the fire. The area where the artist's signature should be has been singed and is unreadable. Too bad. But the date is still legible. It's from this year. Okay, I can't look at that. There is an ash pile underneath her bed, though. Odd. Another pile of ashes under the bed. Looks as though whatever she kept underneath got burned, too. Or it could be that whatever was under the bed is what caught fire in the first place. Although, there's no evidence of what started it. All that's left is a small piece of cloth. Might as well take it. The cloth appears to have some oily residue on it. Interesting. Okay, so we got that. Got that. Looks like this one barely managed to survive. Pity. It looked like a nice work of art. The flames must have been fairly high to be able to stain the ceiling like that. Okay, what about this book? Okay, so we don't have anything there. Hmm, so I need to find something to carry her ashes in. Can I use the waste bin? 
Nothing else of interest in there. Okay. So I need to find a bowl. Or a bag. Was there someone else in the room just now? I thought I heard you talking. Shh. Oh, no. It's just sometimes I think aloud when investigating crime scenes. I see. Good save. We don't need any more police officers thinking you're insane. Judging by these books, Miss Lathan was quite the fan of poetry. Let's just hope her taste was better than Madame Dupre's. Sure this. Okay, so I can't look at those. You have to hand it to her. All right, nothing going on there. Hmm. Okay. Well, I gotta find something to get that pottedness up in there. <sighs> okay, the Brentwell Magazine. And we also have the Usher and Price Attorney's Office. Let's go to the magazine. Ah, hello there. Are you here to drop off an article? Sure. No, actually, I'm a private investigator. The name's Miles Fordham. I'm that too. How exciting. You must have so many interesting stories. You could say that, yes. Please, come in, come in. I'm Alan Brentwell, owner and publisher of Brentwell Magazine. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Confessions of a Steam Addict by Ezra Bartley. I think I'm better off not knowing. True this. For Whom the Bell Almost Told by Suki Snobs. Fascinating stuff. Empty. Too bad. For the publisher of a sensationalist rag, Brentwell is awfully well read. Assuming he actually has read all those books, of course. I can only begin to imagine how many lured and salacious articles are kept in those cabinets. All right, let's talk to the man, the man in charge. I have some questions for you, Mr. Brentwell. Wonderful! It's so seldom I get to answer questions. It sounds like the guy from the first case. What can you tell me about Desiree Lathan? Desiree Lathan. Oh, why, she came to me a few weeks ago in response to an ad I took out requesting articles. She told me she had an idea readers would <laughs> love. We agreed on 10 crowns per paragraph, and she was on her way. Come to think of it, I haven't heard from her in a few days. Were you aware that Miss Lathan is dead? What? No, I had no idea. What happened? I'm not exactly sure. She seems to have burned to death under mysterious circumstances. Mysterious circumstances? Most of her body was burnt to ash, but there's very little fire damage around her. It's as though she herself just caught fire. Oh, that sounds positively ghastly. Oh dear. Is something wrong? I just remembered. The article she was writing. Dear yeah. God, I hope she didn't go too far with her research. Uh -uh. Tell me about Brentwell Magazine. We're a monthly publication focusing on both fiction and non-fiction pieces. Ah, uh, yes, you're publishing that serial, aren't you? The Dissembling Mechanism? You're a subscriber! <laughs> Tell me, what did you think of the conclusion? Quite astonishing, wasn't it? I haven't had a chance to read it yet, I'm afraid. Ah, then I won't say any more about it. My dream was to have a magazine that was well-respected and educational. But sadly, it seems today's audiences are much more interested in reading about sightings of giant bat creatures or mysterious buried treasures. Such a pity. I hear you have a bit of a reputation for making your reporters do questionable things for their articles. You are mistaken, Mr. Fordham. I don't force my writers to do anything. They seem to have this notion that the more extreme their research, the more authentic the articles will be. What sort of extremes are we talking about here? We had one writer who attempted to heighten the sensation of fear she wanted to express in her story. Damn near decapitated herself by sticking her head through an opening at the clock tower at St. Denis Cathedral. Ugh. Thankfully, she made it out alive. It would have been quite the predicament if she hadn't. <laughs> Especially considering that was our most popular article last year. Oh, people have such odd taste. What made you decide to start this business? I always wanted to be a journalist. I never had much luck with any of the local papers, though. So I decided to start my own. <laughs> I admit it's not exactly what I wanted, but I like to think Brentwell Magazine has found its own unique voice. Voice? More like a gurgling scream. Mm -hmm. What exactly was Desiree's article about? <laughs> I, uh, I'm not entirely sure. She merely came to me with the proposal. 
She didn't tell you what that idea was? She did, but uh, I, I wasn't sure what to make of it. Please, Mr. Brentwell, stop stalling and tell yeah, me no what kidding, she was writing dude. about. <clears throat> it was about spontaneous human combustion. What do you know about spontaneous human combustion? That's the thing. I don't know very much at all. It sounded interesting enough. That's why I accepted Miss Lathan's proposal to write the article about it. But what do you know about it? Only that it's a mysterious phenomenon in which a person catches fire spontaneously and burns to death. It sounds exactly as you described Miss Lathan's condition. Do you know what Miss Lathan's research on the subject involved? Only the one contact I gave her, a Miss Angela Maxwell at the Spectre Society in Gascone. Really? The Spectre Society, huh? Shouldn't be surprised to hear that name again. Are you a member? Actually, I am. Then I suggest you do some research there. There's bound to be something relevant. That's what we were reading about that. It was in one of those there. books. Thank you. Perhaps I will. It was about spontaneous human combustion. I remember Thanks that. Thanks for your time, Mr. Brentwell. The pleasure is Oh, all my mine. God. Oh. Okay. So, nothing else to really kind of look on at. In here, nice Brentwell window. Has a front row seat to all the horrible things he might want to write about in his magazine. Okay, exit stage right. Yeah, I remember that book. They had a lot of weird books. Who knew we'd be going back there? Hmm. Or to Usher and Price. Let's go to the Spectre Society. Welcome back, Mr. Fordham. Indeed. Oh, Angela Maxwell. Could I so, ask you about some things, Miss Maxwell? Certainly, darling. I am a member. Are you familiar with a woman named Desiree Lathan? Yes, she came to see me just last week. She told me she was doing research for an article she was writing for Brentwell magazine. What sort of research? She asked me a few questions and looked at my books. That was all. She wasn't here for very long. And what was she researching? Something about spontaneous human combustion, I believe. Did you know that Desiree Lathan is dead? What? My god, no! I didn't! What happened to her? She was found burned to death in her bed. How awful! Do you have any idea how this may have happened? There are a number of possibilities. But if she was in the middle of researching spontaneous human combustion, and then to have this happen... It can't be a coincidence. Are you suggesting she herself was a victim of spontaneous combustion? One need only compare the circumstances of her death with the facts, darling. She can't be serious, can she? The fire was too well spread. What can you tell me about spontaneous human combustion? I'm not overly familiar <laughs> with the subject. <laughs> what a weird, I do have a book about weird thing. I think that's going to have to be the title for the you episode. You are welcome to look at it if it will help. I may, but I'd like to know what your understanding of it is. Well, I believe it is when the Spontaneous human body human combustion. catches fire and burns. <laughs> it usually occurs among elderly women who drink to excess and very little fire damage is caused around the body. That's really all I know. There's quite a bit of fire damage around the body. It's not a very agreeable subject for study now, is it? Thank you for the information. It was very enlightening. It was my pleasure, darling. Okay, let's take a look. That's spontaneous human combustion. Um, mysteries of spontaneous human familiar, combustion. But spontaneous human combustion can't be real, can it? Okay. Then again, sometimes the simplest explanation is the correct uh, one. Fish on the turn for the death from fire. The victims are, are chronic alcoholics. They're usually elderly females. The hands and feet usually fall off. The fire has caused very little damage to things around the body. A residue of greasy and fetid ashes is left behind. I strongly believe the spontaneous combustion is a product of alcoholism. Hmm. Anything else over here? Out of the sands, the giant squid. Huh. Okay, what were, uh... Okay. Investigate the Grass Cone Supper Club. Speak with Attorney Jones. Find a spill container to transport Miss Lathan's ashes. Report to Upton declared his right. Okay. Okay, exit stage right. Is there anything in here I can use? Uh, That's probably the storage case for the sp A great man once said he's dead now. Okay, nothing really. I never much cared for- Let's take a look at the guest book. 
and see when it was that she was in here. There's quite a few members in this group. There's quite a few. Okay, so it's not allowing me to actually look at it this time. Okay, that works for me. Hmm. All right. Exit stage right. Now. May the spirits guide you to that. Maybe I can go back to my house and pick up something to put that on in. Um. Hmm. Okay. We'll head to Usher and Price now. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome to the law offices of Usher and Price. May I help you? Uh, yeah. I'm PI. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Miles Fordham. I'm a private investigator and I'm looking for Jonas Usher. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but Mr. Usher is not seeing anyone today. If it's a matter of urgent legal importance, you could see Mr. Bryce. Okay. Seems like they've got some kind of modern message delivery service in here. Of all the things to spend your money on. What is that? The plaque says it's a portrait of Thomas Usher. Looks like a real go-getter. Begging your pardon, sir. Yes? If I may ask, what is the reason for Mr. Usher's refusal to see anyone today? He has a rather important trial starting tomorrow and doesn't want to run the risk of falling ill. Falling oh. ill? And Mr. Usher is very particular about his health. Very particular. I see. Might it be possible to relay a message to Mr. Usher? Yes, you can leave a message or calling card with me, and I'll make sure Mr. Usher gets it. Hmm. Perhaps Mr. Usher will see me when he sees this. No, oh, what's that? A letter from Mr. Usher to his client, Desiree Latham. What? That's private correspondence. How did you get that? It was evidence I found at a crime scene. And how is it relevant? The crime scene in question was Miss Lathan's own bedroom, where she was found burned to death. That's quite a claim, Mr. Fordham. I can assure you that Mr. Usher deals primarily with facts. Right now, the only fact this letter proves to me is that you somehow rummaged through Miss Lathan's possessions and acquired it. He does have a point. We'll need something a bit more persuasive. Okay. Uh, I actually don't have anything to show. Uh, right. Please stop wasting my time then. I'm very busy. Okay, butthead. I appreciate you. Enjoy the rest. Okay, let's, uh, so I can't sneak on in to any of these things. Hmm, damn. Okay. Get me with these dead ends. Do I have something at my house? A candy dish. Hello, Can dearest. I have returned. Seeing you come home always puts a smile on my face. Thanks, baby. It's been so long since you used that desk. Did you even notice when Adelaide got rid of the chair? Oh, Building those models. Ships. Oh, bookcase, bookcase, clock, photograph. Miles. I can Jean? see why Adelaide calls that plan. Okay. Um. Is there anything in my room I can hold that container with? Um, it's empty. Good riddance. It's admirable. Okay. Bookcase, painting, oh, wardrobe. You... So? Right. What are you talking? Never mind. Yeah. Okay. Um. Pretty, but I'm glad. Can't use this. Can't use that. God darn it. What am I going to put that? <laughs> put this stuff in. Addy? What is it, Miles? I guess I could put these ashes on in. You're looking especially low. Miles, don't fl I wouldn't push my luck with her mind. Okay. I'll let you- Gosh darn it. Hmm. So nothing here. I'll really? see you later, Addy. I wish you'd let me fix your hair before you go out like that. It'll be fine. Okay. Hmm. So there's nothing here. There's nothing there. Nothing at the there. 
Let's go back to this Gascon Supper Club. Well, hello. I'll take that well, tank. No one's cleaned up. You might as well do them the favor. <laughs> well, that'll do, pig. What a weird. What a weird quinky dink. Okay, thank you. I was wondering why we had to come back here. Okay, so now that's off the menu. Let's go back to the pile of ashes. Don't mind if I do. I'm afraid I need to have another look inside Miss Lathan's room, Officer Kane. All right, but please be quick about it. Okay, thank you. Let's get a scoop of this. Oh, Miles, really? You're going to carry the ashes around in a pewter mug? Yeah. It's vital to the investigation that we find out exactly what happened to the body. If anyone can tell us for certain, it's Dr. Edwards. Fair enough. I suppose this isn't the most unpleasant thing you've carried around before. Remember that time we had to go looking for that murder victim's missing head? I'd really rather not, actually. Okay. Got that. Got that. Yeah. So skull of the hand. Okay, we're good to go here. Okay, so as far as the case book, speaks with Trini Ashton's report to Epson Clearance is not one of the most to have Dr. Ertz Corner's Avatar's Ashes. Okay. So yeah, we screwed the pooch because I think if we would have talked, if we would have known about this Andrew character before Ugh. The smell from the bedroom is getting worse. I don't know how much longer I could stand it. If we would have known about this Andrew character Nothing beforehand, to ask him about right now. we could have pumped um that lady for more information about him. I'm, I'm betting that's who it is. And it might be actually the culprit. Dear Lord, what is that smell? Did you step in something out there, Fordham? Private investigation is a dirty job, Upton. You know that. Got a moment, Upton? Yes. Would it be possible for me to access the mortuary? The mortuary? What for? I'd like to consult with Dr. Edwards. All right, but be careful. Make sure you don't let Snelling see you back there. Have a moment. I'm afraid you're on your own. If they've understood, I'll still. Okay. That's it for now. Better. I didn't think so. I was like, eh, that doesn't seem quite right. Okay. I was wondering why I had access to this back part. Uh, oh, hello. Dr. Edwards' lab was always a fascinating place to learn about death. A bit less so now that I'm quite the expert. Oh, did I miss cleaning up some bit of that last corpse? Oh, Fordham, what brings you down here? Hello, Edwards. I was wondering if I could pick your brain. Yes, yes, of course. There's one in a jar over there. And I may have another one around here somewhere. <laughs> that coroner humor never gets old, does it? <laughs> anyway, let me know what you want to discuss. This fellow's not going anywhere. Eh, uh, yeah, that's good humor. For setting things on fire or causing explosions. You know, the perfect way to pass the time. I remember when Edwards used to keep his collection of preserved reproductive organs on this shelf. He must be getting soft in his old age. Or perhaps that's exactly what happened to his collection. Oh, wah, bah, bah, bah. I wonder if Edwards ever got around to fixing this typewriter. The letter E being out of alignment always made his reports a nightmare to read. It's important to keep your hands clean when dealing with dead bodies. After all, you never know where they've been. Until after the post-mortem exam, anyway. This provides the room with just the right amount of heat. Unlike the incinerators in the crematorium. Talk about overkill. Edwards keeps assorted bottles and specimens in there. Nothing too remarkable that I can see. Seems to be empty for now. That's most definitely a good thing. Edwards must have some very good friends in the department to have gotten this custom-made table. Oh it my god, look at that though. table! That's freaking sick! Not a stitch of clothing on him. As if having your torso ripped open and poked around inside weren't bad enough. There truly is no dignity in death. Yeah, let's just keep that... Pardon I mean, me, you Edward. can't see anything, but still. Yes. I'll keep that covered up. Um, I've got these human ashes from a crime scene. Straight to the point. I knew I liked you for a reason, Fordham. Who do they belong to? Desiree Lathan. She was a Gascon Grand Dame. Oh, of course. I heard about that case. She was found burned in her home, wasn't she? That's right. I meant to go over there later today. Well, then I suppose I've saved you the journey. Would you have a look at these? Does this mean you're officially on the case? Not as such. 
In fact, I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention I'd been here. Ah, clandestine operation. Sneaking around under Snelling's nose. I don't have much of a choice. I'm pretty much persona non grata around here these days. Well, you're always welcome in my mortuary. Preferably while still breathing, of course. Anyway, I'll just take those ashes off your hands. I'm sure your social life will soon improve. Yes, I was making quite the impression. <laughs> this is an interesting choice of container. It was either that or carry them around in my bare hands. Well, I'm a bit busy right now, but I should have something for you within the next couple of hours. But you do realize the information won't be exclusive to you. I'll have to pass it on to the detectives on the case. That's fine. Naturally. That just gives me more of an incentive to work quickly. I found this piece of burned cloth at the crime scene. Could you take a look at it for me? This is from the Lathan case? It is, yes. What do you need me to look at exactly? It appears to have some oily residue on it. Interesting. I'm afraid I have my hands full right now, but you can feel free to use my workbench if you'd like. Oh, cool. To do what exactly? Surely they taught you something about basic chemical analysis when you worked here. Not yes, really, but well, I mean, I'm willing to I learn. always let Bill handle the more technical aspects of our cases. A real pity I'm not around to help you anymore, isn't it? But I'll have a look and see if something comes back to me. Keeping busy down here, Edwards? Oh, you know me. I've always got my hands in someone. Edwards always <laughs> did have a way with words. <laughs> this postmortem was just a formality, really. The victim died of a gunshot wound to the head. Last week, though, we had a real kicker. An old man was brought in, and though he appeared quite dead, I was told that he'd been in a trance for over half a year. Apparently, he was hypnotized right at the point of death, and somehow managed to remain alive in a fashion. In any case, when I began performing the exam, his entire body decayed into a putrefied mess within minutes. It was fascinating. What? Uh, should you really be giving me these details, Edwards? Oh, hell, I don't mind telling you, Miles. It's not like you're going to go tell Snelling. Besides, you're the only one who's come to see me all week. Dead people make lousy conversationalists. Hey, I take offense to that statement. So, Snelling got promoted to chief, did he? Yes, not too long after you left. Personally, I think he took advantage of your situation to change things around here. Was it really that much of a shock? Bill and I weren't exactly the most well-liked detectives on the force. But you were respected. You two solved over 350 cases in 15 years. You were an institution. Damn right we were. It's so easy for people to resent their more successful peers. Ah, Edwards. Nice to know someone missed us. You didn't examine Bill after he died, did you? Ha! <laughs> he wishes. No, there was nothing inconclusive about his death. He died from impact after falling from the roof of a building. Why, was there something else I should have looked into? No, I was just curious. As fond as I am of Edwards, it would have been a bit much for him to go poking around my insides. Okay. Thanks. That's all I needed to know for the moment. So we get to we get to do Anytime a little something folks. something here on a workbench. Where's this at? Is this it over here? Oh, the workbench. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, it's been ages since we chemical got to do any analysis. Type of chemical analysis. Let's this see if I can remember grand. some chemistry. Doctor Edwards, could you remind me what it is I'm meant to be doing? Yes, of course. Go ahead and get as much of that oily residue from the cloth into the petri dish. Okay. Good. Now add some of the chemical reagent in the red bottle to the dish. Aha! The oil turned orange. Yes! The reagent has caused a chemical reaction and changed the oil's color. Isn't science fun? Quite. But how does this help me? I have some samples of the most common types of flammable oils on the shelf. Go ahead and add them to the test tubes. Good. Now simply check each one with the reagent to see if you can find a match. And if I don't find one? Then I suggest going out and looking for more oil samples. Okay, so, um, whale oil, kerosene, coal oil. Hmm, it's probably kerosene. Those both seem like a bit much to get your hands on. So much for kerosene being the culprit. Hmm, really? We'll try coal. I know oil, whale oil was, uh, like, highly prevalent, uh, prevalent during these days. But, you know, it'd make it easier. Too bad. I would have bet on it being coal oil. Damn, man. 
Okay, I guess it's whale. <sighs> whale burns really good. But, you know, after the whole whaling incidents and stuff... Then... Whale oil be damned! Looks like that's not a match. <sighs> oh, you love it! Okay, well, it's none of those three. What is Looks this? Looks like ammonium chloride. Won't be of much use to us in this experiment. Well, it's none of these three. What's the point? Huh. I don't think the good doctor has anything else to teach us right now. So, what if it was a combination? Better dispose of the sample currently in the Petri dish. Oh. Huh. Oh. Okay. Well, it's none of these. We already confirmed this isn't the right substance. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's none of these. Huh. What kind of other oils are there? Got a moment, Upton? Yes, but let's make this quick. So there's a fourth unkind... Okay. That's it. Kind of... Okay. So we're looking, presumably, for... an extra type of oil. Hmm. Was there something at the crime scene we missed? No, I mean, we had... We got everything there. Hmm. Nope. Okay. An invitation to the... <laughs> Nothing new to add? Okay. Let's double check here. I'm afraid I need... Alright. Must have missed something. Lathan's hat doesn't look as though this fire. Let's double check. Just a pile of nothing else. Of the flames must have been fair. Looks like this one barely. Huh. That's a nice porch. The area where the but the date is still legible. Nothing else. Okay, check out the burn remains one more this time. This one's clean. There's a tattoo on her. I don't think Desiree. Bill? What? I don't think there's much. Alas, poor. Come to think of it? That Anything else? No. Okay. Oh, man. We screwed this up. Okay. Hmm. I wonder if she knows about Welcome any other... Welcome back, Mr. Fordham. Indeed. Let me look at this bookcase. Let me take a look real quick. Metamorphosis. Astral projection. Seance. Um. Hmm. Voodoo. Okay, well, lines around the well. Already like that. Tarot. Spirits of the ether. Okay. I don't think there's any. What a ridiculous. I think I've seen one of these. It's a spirit board. We use it to count. Well, I've got a mess. I never much. Hmm. Okay. Plaque. <laughs> There's quite a few. Me I'll be uh, going. Maybe. God damn it, man. Okay. So we've been there. We can go back to the magazine. I don't think. Hmm. 
What's the movie this article about? Confessions of for the published empty. They can only begin. They can only begin. Hmm. Damn, man. That sucks. Okay, so police station, inspector society. Been there. Usher and Price. Begging your Yeah. Sir, it is of the utmost importance that I speak with Mr. Usher. And as I said, he isn't taking visitors today. But it's in regards to his client, Desiree Lathan. Or should I say, former client. Miss Lathan found another attorney? No, I'm sorry to be the one to have to inform you, but she's dead. Dead? Hmm, I had no idea. No? It was in today's newspaper. I haven't read it yet. Mr. Usher forbids it in the office. But surely he's read it. Just because he forbids you reading the paper in the office. No, but I mean he forbids the presence of newspapers in the office. He fears they bring in outside germs. I see. In any case, if what you say is true, I'll need some sort of proof. I suppose just bringing in a copy of the newspaper is out of the question, then. Eh, we'll have to find another way. Okay. I appreciate you. Enjoy the... What a... Okay. I mean, do I just bring in a piece of her dead body? I could grab her hand. That is... Let's just go grab her hand. I'm afraid I... All right. <laughs> Will that be satisfactory if I picked her hand or her leg? It's got the tattoo. There's a tattoo on... This one's clean. I don't think Desiree... Bill? What? So I can't take... Alas, come to think of... I don't think there's... Okay, well there's... Nothing going on here. Nothing else. <clears throat> That's a nice point. Here. But the date is still legible. Okay. So, if we can't bring in any of that kind of stuff. Hmm. Maybe Upton could give us something. He's not going to have anything. Maybe Upton will. Up that do you got a proof of of deadness? Got a moment, Upton? Yes. That's it. Better get Ugh. Let's let's go talk back to the mortuary guy. He said he needed a couple hours for conclusive evidence. Pardon me, Ed. Yes. Have you had a chance to look at those ashes I gave you? Yes, I have. Unfortunately, there isn't much I can tell you. The victim burned to death at a very high temperature. These ashes are greasy and putrid because of liquefied fat from the body, which burned like a candle. As to what caused her to burn, I cannot say without more evidence. I'm sorry, Miles. It's quite all right, Edwards. I appreciate the information nonetheless. Well, just so you don't go away empty-handed, have a copy of my report. Oh, here we Maybe go. It will be of some use. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. That's all I needed to know for the moment. Any time, Fordham. So her own fat is is what burned. So is that now a thing over here? What? See, it should be one of those, but it's just not. Miles, the petri dish. Okay. Is there anything else I could touch here? No, just in and out of here. All right. We got our evidence. That she's dead, so we can go back on over there and talk to at least the guy in charge. This m might still get us back on the right track of this case. Especially after we find out who it is that she is uh, leaving all of her money to. Okay. Because right now we're, we're being Taking stonewalled. Pardon, sir. Yes? Perhaps Mr. Usher will see me when he sees this. No? What's that? 
A report from Dr. Malcolm Edwards, the city coroner, confirming Miss Lathan's untimely demise. Let me see that. Oh my. Wait one moment, would you? Martin, what is the meaning of this? Uh, the gentleman who brought that is a private investigator. He's waiting outside to see you. Send him in, then. All right, good. You heard him, Mr. Fordham. You may go inside and see Mr. Usher. Thank you kindly. So, a private investigator, are you? That's right. Miles Fordham is my name. Jonas Usher, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Pleasure's all mine. So, it would seem that Miss Lathan has shuffled off the mortal coil, as it were. I'm <laughs> sorry to say that is indeed the case. Please come in, have a seat, make yourself comfortable. I only ask that you kindly wash your hands in the basin first, and limit what you touch in here. This one seems a bit on edge, doesn't he? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Fordham. I appreciate your cooperation. Indeed. What do you have Judging over here? Judging by how full these bottles are, Usher doesn't indulge much. What a waste. The bottles. Usher seems to like keeping his... She burned with liquid. She, bur Usher, she burned with alcohol. questions for you. And hopefully I have your answers. We gotta go back to the freaking... To the, uh... What can you tell me about Desiree Lathan? She was a lovely woman. I'm saddened to hear of her unfortunate passing. How long had you been her attorney? She retained me some ten years ago, I believe. That's quite a long time. Yeah. Yes, I remember I had just gotten over a bout of melancholia and been able to work in nearly a month. I didn't think I'd make it out of that, but luckily things took a turn for the better. Miss Lathan came to see me, and I've served as her attorney ever since. Would you say Miss Lathan is a wealthy woman? Indeed I would. Her estate is worth a significant sum. Of course, you understand that this is confidential information, so I cannot tell you the exact amount. That's yes, fine. Yes, of course. I found this letter in Miss Lathan's bedroom, which mentions that she recently changed her will. Could you tell me a bit more about the circumstances surrounding this change? That's not an uncommon occurrence. People change their wills all the time. Relatives and friends fall in and out of favor constantly. Had Miss Lathan made changes to her will previously? No, this was the first time. What change did she make, exactly? Just a change to her beneficiary. Nothing out of the ordinary. And when did this change occur? About four months ago, if I recall correctly. Yes, it was definitely in June, because I'd been in bed with a nasty stomach flu at the end of May. That was no fun, let me tell you. I think I lost nearly six pounds from the constant trips to the WC. Couldn't keep a thing down, and whatever did stay down soon came out the other end, if you get my meaning. I'd say his meaning is regrettably impossible to avoid. Who did Miss Lathan name as her new beneficiary? Mr. Fordham, please! You know I couldn't possibly tell you that. There is such a thing as attorney-client privilege. <laughs> Threaten him with a sneeze? <laughs> yes. Mr. Usher, if you don't tell me right now, I'm going to sneeze on you. You... what? I've been very sick lately, and I feel a rather nasty sneeze coming on. You wouldn't dare. Oh, wouldn't I? I really <laughs> need that information. I... Uh, uh, uh. No! Get out of my office! Not if you don't... Uh, uh, uh. Tell me the name. All right, all right! It's Roger DeVay! That's who she named as her new beneficiary! I need an address, Usher. I can only hold this sneeze back for so long. 775 Bubble Trust Place in Chumley! <laughs> now please get out of here before you infect me! There, see? That wasn't so hard. You scoundrel. You nearly gave me a heart attack! <laughs> a fine performance, Miles. <laughs> it made me proud. Oh, great. So we got a new de uh, beneficiary. Can you think of anyone who may have wanted to harm Miss Lathan? No, I can't. What makes you think that someone actually killed her? It seems the most plausible explanation. Miss Lathan was getting on in years. It's likely she may have developed a case of pneumonia. That's no, the most common killer of the She definitely people. burnt to death. I had it when I was younger. Most unpleasant. Constant coughing, spitting up phlegm. So new beneficiary. 
Thankfully, I made a full recovery. An unknown substance that lit her that into was flames. The cause of death, how would it explain the fact that her body was completely burned? She was a smoker. Perhaps she was having a cigarette when she died and dropped it on the bed, causing it to catch fire. Hmm. I found no cigarette butts at the crime scene. I'm merely offering my opinion, Mr. Fordham. You can take it or leave it. I think we should leave it. <laughs> Got me to sneeze after that. How long have you been practicing law, Mr. Usher? Usher and Price has been operating since 1805. Hmm. I took over from my father 15 so what, years ago. 30, the stress six hasn't years? helped my heartburn, I can tell 39? you. 39? Why, just last night I was tossing and turning because I couldn't stand the burning in my throat. That's why I've got these bags under my head. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Ah, yes. And Mr. Price? He's still here, although I think he'll probably be retiring soon as well. But the law firm has done well over the years, and I have a feeling it'll do even better in the years to come. Oh? Why is that? We're currently beginning a group litigation against Royal Maverick for the Ligia disaster. Oh, really? I'm confident that we'll recover quite a significant sum for the families of those killed. You weren't by chance affected by the disaster, were you? Thankfully, I wasn't, no. Shame. It could have joined the class action and done quite well when we win. You know, I always thought we detectives made our living off human tragedy. Mr. Usher, I've noticed from your rules and habits that you seem to have a particular aversion to germs. Why is that, if I may ask? Oh, I've been ill most of my life, Mr. Fordham. I was a sickly child, and unfortunately my condition hasn't improved with age. It's a miracle I'm still alive. That's why I'm so careful about exposing myself to germs. I see. How's my color? Do I look pale to you? Yeah, I actually uh, look good. Not particularly. I saw myself in the mirror this morning and thought I looked a bit peaked. Also, my leg has been hurting more than usual, which has been cause for concern. Nah, you've really done it, Miles. <clears throat> Yes, well, moving on. Thank you for your help, Mr. Usher. The pleasure is all mine, Mr. Fordham. I'm glad he forgot all about me sneezing on him. Okay, so... Stern-looking lady. Indeed, must be his mother. Judging by how full these bottles... Anything else... of consequence? Usher seems to like keeping his gift. Is there anything more boring than books on law? Oh, drowsy. Okay. Adds a nice bit of color to the room. Nothing else. Let's get okay, cool. Now, can I see the other attorney? Nothing more to ask. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, teleport. Teleport? Okay, so we got the painter. Brentwell magazine. Right away. So nothing there. Let's go to DeVay's residence. Did Usher give us the wrong address? This should be 775, but there's it's the no guy that painted here. the painting. Hey, that's just like the one we had when I was a boy. <laughs> Good old Rusty. He served us well. Talk to this homeless man. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Is this 775 Pumblechook Place? Yeah, it would be. The building were still here. Oh, I see. Might I ask you a few questions? You can ask. Do you know Roger DeVay? No, of course I know him. He lives here with me. He does? Well, uh, whenever he decides to come home, anyway. Rest of the time, I suspect he finds a way to sleep at his job. Me, I'd do the same, except I can't stand the smell of the horses. Do you know where Mr. DeVay works? Nah, he never told me. Do you know a woman named Desiree Lathan? Nah, I don't know many women. They're not too fond of my company. Well, I don't understand why. I, I always try to be a perfect gentleman. I guess I just don't got the charm. <clears throat> I've asked <laughs> Roger to give me a few pointers. He's a big hit with ladies, you know. Is that right? Oh, yeah. He no sooner looks at them than they're falling at his feet. A real natural, that one. Never brings it back here, though. Always winds up staying with him. Getting a free meal and a soft bed out of it. Ah, well, the bohemian lifestyle ain't for everyone. Maybe someday my luck will change. I'm sure it will change the day he decides to take a bath. What's your name, sir? Me? I'm Herman. Arm and Shaw. How long have you been living here? 
Law been here for ages, since before the building got condemned and was torn down. They pretty much forced us out, you see, but a couple of us came back and set up here. Seemed like a good idea. I had nowhere else to go. That's not so bad, except for when it rains. And I guess we'll have to bundle up a bit more when it gets cold. But other than that, it's like the place was still standing. There's some of that classic chum ingenuity. But maybe it's just delusion. Okay. What happened to this place? Why was it condemned? The building was old. In a pretty sad state, so the inspectors came by and said it was unfit for living. There was a whole lot of us here. Most were able to pick up and go, but a few of us stayed. Why don't you go to a workhouse? You wouldn't be asking if you'd ever been inside one. It's wall-to-wall -wall people, children crying, sick folk coughing all over you. But there's plenty of that out here, too. Well, sure, but out here, there's freedom. Nobody telling you what to do except the odd copper. Not even many of them in this neighborhood. Besides, this is my home. Just because it's missing a few walls don't mean I ought to abandon it. You look somewhat familiar. Didn't I see you protesting outside the Harris Construction Yard? Yeah, I was there. What of it? Were you affected by the Ligia disaster? Well, nobody I know was killed, if that's what you mean. Then what were you so doing there? why were you protesting the construction of the Lenore? Well, that Devons fella promised he'd buy us a meal if we stood in the crowd. What? And for a free meal, I'd do just about anything. I thank you for your time. Maybe give us a shilling or two for the trouble? I'll consider it. This. Yeah, those aren't half bad. Too bad they aren't finished. Hmm, I wonder if they're going to be used to keep the fire going. Yeah, those aren't. Hmm. Yeah, those. Hmm. By chum standards, that's practically a four poster. I used to draw funny pictures of rich people on walls too when I was a kid. Never did a lick of good, but it would always make me feel better. These aren't in such bad shape, really. As far as the chum goes. This is one of the nicer areas. Okay, so we got... Hey, that's just like... Best not... Nothing left to discuss here. Can't look at the paintings, so we haven't put those, apparently, those two things together. These aren't in... Okay, exit stage lift. No. Hmm. So... If we go back here. Letter, letter, letter. An invitation. Okay. Definitely. Nothing new to. Nothing to ask him. Are we going to put two and two together if I go and look at this? I'm afraid. All right. That's a nice portrait of Miss Lathan. Too bad of the area where the artist's sick. But the date is still legible. Oh, man. Anything left of the burn remains? I don't think... Bill? What? This one's... There's a tent. Alas, come to think of it, I don't think... Just... The... Okay, so let's head back to the... Um, let's head back home, and then let's head back to the mortuary. Because if he was using something like an acetone as a burner, that might. I've managed to survive. Good to see. That might do something here. Addie? What is. Please let me. That's enough, Miles. If you're just going to stand. But. Stop it. I'm tr Okay. Nothing. Oh, man. So I'm heading out for don't <sighs> So Brentwell magazine I wonder if this guy knows anything about the I painter. don't think this No, it doesn't look like it. And I can't go back to the what's this guy's place. The Spectre Society perhaps. Welcome back. I don't think there's any Nothing going on here either. Hmm. I'll be going now. Me. 
So they're all dead ends. Got a moment? Yeah. That's Ugh. it. Alright, to the mortuary. You've seen one. Edwards keeps. I remember what. Or perhaps that's exactly what. I okay. don't think the good doc. So there's absolutely. Yeah, we've already gotten over. All right, man. It seems like we're, we're deadlocked. We already confirmed this isn't the right substance, Miles. You're just wasting time now. Looks like ammonium chloride. Well yeah, we've we've done everything. I mean, though, there, there's one last bottle left, which is the, the last the last chemical that we need to analyze, which I'm guessing is like acetone, which would we be a great fire starter. You know, because he's a painter. We already confirmed. Okay, now we're just wasting time. We are just wasting time. Because I don't want to solve this case. I don't want to wrap it on up, even though it's looking like I've screwed the pooch pretty heartily up on this. And the only thing we can do is wrap up the conversation. Wrap it up. There's absolutely nothing, man. Best not to bother. Doesn't look like much, but I better keep Doesn't look like much. These aren't in such So there's absolutely I used to draw funny never did a lick of Yeah, those aren't half bad. Hmm, I wonder if they're gonna be used to keep the fire. Doesn't look like best not to bother him any further. He's got a hard enough time of it as it is. Uh. So that 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 looks like that's it, man. I t screwed it up with her conversation in the very beginning. Confessions of a for whom the for the publisher of empty. I don't think there's. Yeah, no, shoot. They can only begin. Just straight s screwed the pooch on this. <sighs> There's nothing here. So nothing there. Nothing at DeVay's. Nothing at Brantwell Magazine. Nothing at the police station. Nothing, nothing at the Spectre Society. And nothing at home. Right, unless I'm just Welcome totally back. missing something. The great man, he's dead now. What a ridiculous... I think I've it's a spirit board. We use it to contact. Well, yes. I've got that's probably the <laughs> spooky ghost. Does nothing, man. Yep. Shit. <sighs> the plaque says Leonora Pattinson. I don't think there's. Any I never much care. There's no absolutely nothing else. I'll be going. Me. Unless there's something at her crime scene that we just missed. Now that we have this slightly new Definitely information. Judging by these books, let's just hope her tape. Nothing new to. Okay, one last time, and I'm I think that's... I'm afraid I need to have another look in... All right. We're going to have to wrap it up. Screw this up, man. Just a pile of... Nothing else... Looks like this one barely met. The flames must have been fairly high. And nothing left in the waste bin. Nothing else of interest. Miss Lathan's half-written article about igniting... Doesn't look as though this fireplace is beneath... 
as much as I like this painting, this isn't the time for art appreciation. I can't even look outside. <sighs> That's a nice portrait. The area where the artist's signature... But the date is still legible. It's from this year. And her burn remains. I don't think there's a... Bill... What? This one's... Yep. There's a tattoo. I don't think there's... I don't think... There's... Alas, come to think of it. So there's absolutely nothing else. God damn it, man. <sighs> yep, blew it. Blew it. It's like we have the suspect. Locate Roger DeVay. It's like, there's no other, there's no other place. I mean, we have his residence. We have this, we have that. There's not, there's absolutely nothing. God damn it. Hey, Addie. Hello. There was nothing in this newspaper. No. Is there anything in my room? No. It's a good ridden. God dang it, dude. You've mucked up. <sighs> how are your parents? You remember how much time Adel? At least these days, with. I always liked that painting. It's been so long since you used your book. Yep, I don't know. Y you stump, you stump me. Time for me to get some. I wish you. It'll be fun. <sighs> like even by screwing over. Now you know what it would have been. We would have had we would have had to gotten all the way to that guy's name. And found out who he was before talking to that lady. Which is really, really crazy to even think about. Yeah, there's just nothing, man. Alright. Got a moment? Yeah. I'm done with the. Oh. She was the unfortunate victim of spontaneous human combustion. I. There isn't a scientific explanation for it, but she fits all the criteria. Damn man. She was an elderly woman. She was known to drink excessively, and the way her body burnt is consistent with all previous accounts of spontaneous combustion. Add to that the fact that very little around her was damaged by the fire, and you've got a textbook case. You know, I heard a few of the officers talking about a demon getting into her, but I had no idea it was an actual documented occurrence. Well, this is certainly one of the more unusual explanations we've had, but I'll pass it along. Although I'm sorry you won't be able to gloat to Snelling that you solved the case before his detectives did. I can find other means of amusement, I think. Good work, Fordham. As usual, I'll send anything else your way as soon as I get it. That sucks. Dearest, I'm back. There you are. I was starting to get worried you wouldn't make it home in time. In time? In time for what? For dinner at the Rutherfords. I told you about it the other night, don't you remember? Oh, oh yeah, I remember. That. Sorry, dear. It must have slipped my mind. How you haven't yet been presented a prize for Husband of the Year is beyond me. There's still time for you to get ready if you hurry. Why don't we spend a nice quiet evening in together? I'd much prefer that. We've had a quiet evening in every night for the past three weeks. I need to get out of the house. Okay. Then go ahead without me. Please give Anne and Joseph my regrets. So you're just going to sit here at home by yourself? I'll probably just catch up on my reading or try and get some sleep. Maybe I'll get around to reading that story in Brentwell's. 
All right, suit yourself. I shouldn't be home too late, but don't wait up. Have a wonderful time, my love. Ah, alone at last. If only I were. Careful what you wish for, Miles. You just might get it. Seeing as I won't, I think another trip to the Angel's in order. Oh, you're gonna break your word in addition to lying? That's bold. Nonsense. I'll be home in no time. It'll just be a quick drink to calm my nerves and get you out of my hair. Uh, I think I need a machete for that, Forty. Very funny. So, that last case was really something. Spontaneous combustion. <laughs> Who would have thought? You might want to take it easy on the drinking, Miles. Don't want you randomly catching fire, too. You're not listening to me, are you? Oh, right, you've had two drinks already. Fine, I'll just see myself out. Copper for your thoughts, Miles? I was just thinking about my wife. I've been letting things get to me, and, well, I haven't been entirely fair to her. I'm sorry to hear that, friend. You know, I'm always here to listen. Indeed, and I appreciate it, but I've dug my own hole. I'm the only one who can get myself out of it. One last gin for the road? Ah, hell, why not? Ugh, it's later than I thought. Addie must be asleep. Or she's not there. No. Nope. Miles, I thought you said you were staying in tonight. What happened to you? Uh, nothing. I went out for a bit and lost track of time. Miles, you're dead drunk. No, no, of course I'm not. Don't you dare keep lying to me, Miles. It's obvious. I can smell it on you. But I'm not drunk. I I only had two, I think. I don't care how many you had. You promised me this wouldn't happen again. Where exactly did you go tonight anyway? I was at the Angel. The Angel? But why would you go there? I suppose I was just trying to relive the old days. So why didn't you tell me you were going? I don't know. I... Miles, this has to stop. First it was that sleep medicine, now you've started to go out drinking yourself into a stupor after you explicitly promised me you wouldn't again. It's clear that you've been keeping something from me, and using drugs and drink as a way to avoid dealing with it. No, really, it's just... No, Miles. I'm tired of the lies. I heard what you said when I came home from my appointment with Mrs. Lefebvre. God forbid Adelaide ever find out about... something. I thought... I wanted to think I'd imagined it, so I let it go. But I've come to realize just how wrong I was. Addie, please. Enough. No more excuses, no more lying. I just want to hear the truth. What Ugh. is it you're not telling me? I... I can't tell you, Addie. I, I'm sorry, but if I do, you'll think I'm crazy. Do you know what I think is crazy, Miles? The fact that you think it necessary to lie to your own wife. Am I to believe that for all these years you've never felt you could trust me? Of course not. It's just that this is... this is different. A lie is a lie, Miles. And the bottom fact is you've been lying to me for months. Perhaps I was too naive or too distracted to see what was really going on, but you finally opened my eyes. This can't go on. I refuse to let it go on. What? What are you saying? Get out, Miles. And don't come back until you're ready to tell me the truth. Addie, you don't mean that. I do mean it, Miles. I don't care where you spend the night, but it's not going to be here. Damn. If you ever decide you want to tell me what's going on, I'll listen. But until then... Just go. Damn, got tossed the hell out. <laughs> oh. yeah, you shouldn't have had one too many. Take me away from all my troubles. So far away from all the worries in my life. <sighs> Who in the ether is calling at this time?
time of night. <laughs> oh, Miles, but please come in. It's so nice to see you outside of work. Oh, I get a hug and a kiss? Is that how it works now? You put up your rough and tough attitude, but I know deep down you're really a kitten. Upton, are you drunk? <laughs> no, of course not. I admit I like to have a glass of wine or six to unwind after work, but I can hold my own. Well, I'm glad you're not, because I am. Wait, what's going on? Is everything all right? No, I'm afraid I've made a mess of things at home. Addie threw me out. Oh, Miles. I'm terribly sorry to hear that. Not as sorry as I am, believe me. What happened? It's really not worth getting into. Let's just say I need to figure some things out about my life. <laughs> Don't we all? Constance, I, I hate to impose, but... Of course you can stay here, Miles, as long as you need to. Thank you. I won't need much space. That chair in the corner should do nicely. Are you sure? You won't be uncomfortable? No, I'm about to probably pass out right I've now. I've slept in worse places, believe me. All right. Well, I should probably be getting to bed. Early morning tomorrow and all that. Of course. Have a good night, Upton. And thank you again for letting me stay. Not a problem. Good night. Hmm. Boy, this case is that that case pissed me off. Ah, election night. The perfect opportunity to switch out one rich swindler for another. Don't know why you're wasting your time. It's not as though the prime minister actually does anything. Hmm. It's oddly quiet in here. Maybe my mustache drawing campaign had an effect after all. Good evening, sir. Are you registered to vote? I am. Yes, I am. Here's my registration card. Very good, Mr. Fordham. You've come at an excellent time. Go ahead and step inside a booth. Take as long as you need. Thank you, young man. And I will do that on the next episode. Because that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, go ahead and leave a like, comment on down below, subscribe if you're subscriber. When we come back, we'll head into case number four of five. And so we're drawn to a near conclusion. This case really bummed me out. Like, I, you'd have to be, you, you'd have to be on your mark, honestly, before talking to what's her, what's her name. She's, she's the one that would probably give up the address to the, uh, or to the, to the whereabouts of the, uh, of that guy in particular. Um, that's the only way I can really see it. Honestly, I'm I'm betting, I'm betting the last chemical is something from where uh, he works on at. Like it's got to be like an acetone. He's a painter, so obviously he uses like acetone or something like that. Uh, but you know, you'd have to know that she was seeing another guy and get all this information on out, and then have your wife talk to her about getting information and pumping her for the perhaps whereabouts of that younger guy is the way I see is the way I see this unfolding. And I mean, they gave you that. It's like, Oh yeah, no, you want to go check our stuff first. Yeah, I kind of do. I mean, yeah, man, psh, right off the bat, just the beginning of it screwed the entire case. Damn man. Damn. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. I guess we'll have to pay a little bit closer attention to the next one because that was right off the bat just screwed the entire case not being able not getting as much. I mean, it, it did give me the option, but I've and I've regretted it ever since, even at the start of the beginning. But yeah, that's gonna have to do it for this one. <sighs> Sometimes you can't win them all, and that sucks. But yeah. So until next time, everybody, you take it easy, and I'll see you around. Peace. <laughs>